done all of those things except get the red hood. I called the fire marshal, let me know that the red hood was extremely expensive. I did not have the money. Could I get an extension? He gave me verbally a 30-day extension. On last week, last Wednesday, um, <coughs> Mr. Joey Foster came to the church, did uh, an investigation, checked the building out. He came back after 5 o'clock and told me that I needed to put all of the people out immediately. I am here this morning because it is the holidays. We're embarking upon Thanksgiving. We're a week away from Thanksgiving. Just a few weeks away from Christmas, I am asking if the council would help me in any way to get an extension to correct the problems. On last week, they brought new things to be fixed. They want egress windows and or a fire. I mean, a special system, I'm sorry. Uh, we don't have time to do it. Uh, Mr. Gary Norman called me yesterday evening, told me I had to get the egress windows or the sprinkler system. Home Depot has agreed to donate the windows, but I need time to get it done. That's why I'm here. And to keep the people in the building. Does that complete your statement? Yes, sir. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, Council Member Green. Thank you, Pastor Castle. Uh, and thank you all for the good work you do in the community. Uh, I know you've been working with Claude in our office uh, with regard to this issue. Um, uh, what is, it basically comes down, uh, from my understanding, from the reports that we get, not only from public works, but also from the fire department, is health and safety issues and also uh, issues with regard to uh, individuals uh, in, 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 if, in fact, there is uh, an emergency situation, <laughs> uh, the individuals would have a safe route, route in and out of the facility. And uh, the issues that you mentioned with regard to uh, assistance uh, in uh, giving you more time to get this done, um, because we are dealing with health and safety issues, if something were to happen within the 30 day increment or the increment give you, the city of Houston would have already put on notice of a of, of fire code violations. Thus, uh, would have exposure for the city of Houston with regard to this. And so, uh, when it comes to health and safety issues, uh, that's why uh, 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 you, found, you found the city to be extremely strict on these type of issues. Uh, now, I know the city has uh, provided additional uh, Places for the residents to say hence to stay pending uh, your building coming up to code, uh, and uh, we still uh, extend that opportunity for you to do that. Uh, however, um, uh, uh, now it becomes a liability and a city liability issue, and, th and that's why you, uh, you you're getting the response that you get. But I'll let you respond to that. Um. Councilman Green, I called your office several times and talked to Mr. Foster, and in communicating with Mr. Foster, he didn't appear to have an understanding of what, of what I was saying. Even though I did see the emails uh, uh, between your office and uh, Mr. Uh, Gary Norman's with the Public Works, the thing of it is, is that there are ways to get out of that building. I, un I do understand that they want additional uh, ways. They want additional access. There are fire alarms all over that building. There are fire alarms. To some of those people, that is the only home they have. They have no relatives. They don't want to leave. It's home. I have a Cuban guy there. He has no people and, here. And, and I get that. And the objective is not to displace anyone. We have found a place for them to go pending, only pending, giving you the opportunity to bring it up to code. You know, we don't set the code here at city, at, at, at council. These are, you know, state regulated codes that we have to deal with, that we have to live by, but could subject us to liability. And so that is the issue with regard to this. And so we made sure that no one <coughs> was displaced pending the construction and getting done what needs to be done. And I think we provided, or we have an opportunity to place individuals uh, until we're able to get up to code to make this happen. 
the people do not want to leave. I discussed it. I told them about the alternative place. They don't want to leave. They have one of them say he'll pitch a tent because it's the only home they have. And like I said, we have fire alarms all over that building. There are fire alarms everywhere. In every bedding area, there are fire alarms. So if anything would happen, we have people that are up all night long. They don't go to bed. We have 24-hour security now. So if a fire would break out, there would be somebody there to awaken those that are asleep. That's all I'm saying, just for the holidays. Thanksgiving is next week, and for Christmas. That's all I'm asking. Uh, uh, Pastor, uh, thank you for being here and for your uh, your ministry and, and your outreach. I think uh, Council Member Green has kind of laid out the city's position. What we're saying is just kind of a temporary uh, uh, bridge until you can complete what you're already working on with Home Depot and others to try to bring certain uh, upgrades to, to the uh, sleeping areas. Uh, that are necessary. Uh, I think building code enforcement and HFD fire code inspectors seems like they've gone uh, above and beyond in trying to coordinate and actually uh, work with a, with an organization to, to help uh, that temporary effort. I think you uh, declined their, their services, so they're trying. It's not a long-term uh, answer. We understand we want them to come back as soon as possible, uh, but at the same point, we want to make sure that it is safe. I know you're saying that it is safe, and but we just have to comply with certain things. But Mr. Gary Norman is here. Maybe you can tell me some of the most recent things you have and work on an extension or work on some of those issues. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate it. Okay. Is that? Thank yeah, you. There's nothing. Thank you. Ms. Jones.